Well, hello and welcome back to the Fearless Future podcast. We are your hosts, Glenn Schwarm. And Amber Schwarm. And today we are going to dive into a topic that I think many of you are going to really enjoy if you are in the real estate investing space or you want to be in the real estate investing space, and that is contractors. Yep. Today is going to be a contractor crash course, and we're going to talk about how to find, how to vet, how to manage, and how to keep good contractors on your team. And after 1,100 deals and you know hundreds of those are full-on renovations, I think we have earned the right to talk about that today. Yeah, we've been through a few of them. And I think dealing with contractors is probably one of the more intimidating factors of getting involved in real estate investing if you're flipping houses or renovating them. So this will... Do you think more for a female than a male? I definitely think so. Okay. Yes, 100%. Just knowing how they treated you in the early days. And we should we should start this episode by talking about how we structured our business because it's different than a lot. Yeah. And the, it was very untraditional. Yeah. The untraditional part was that I would handle all the business part of the buying, the selling, the paperwork, negotiating, <clears throat> yeah, negotiating. Dealing with the agents. This is for buying the houses, buying and selling the houses. What Amber would do is she was the, the boss at being a general contractor. Well, I, pro- I was the project manager. So, you, like, I, I handled all of the contractors, hiring, firing, developing scopes of work, making sure. They're getting done what they need to get done, issuing payments, Yeah, dealing with the day-to-day stuff. Of, you of dealt the with project. all that, and I got the literal shit job. So I got to yes. deal with the septic, the sewer, any foundation issues. Yeah, well, I wasn't stupid. Or, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. gave you those jobs. Or I didn't major, want them. <laughs> major plumbing issues I was certainly called in for. So I got the literal shit jobs I had to do. So that was literally what, what I did. But anyways, that was how we structured our business. I think that lit, lends us right into... The first thing we should define for everybody is the difference between a general contractor and then self-managing the job yourself. Like if you want to hire, people say, do I hire a GC or do I hire a bunch of subs and do it myself? And what's the difference between a contractor and a general contractor too? Right. So I think we should dive into that. And I think you should talk about that first. Like first off, let's define general contractor, that model versus self-managing. How, how yeah, would you describe so, that? So when you're hiring a GC or a general contractor, they're the ones that are going to basically manage the job site and coordinate all the different trades, the painters, the electricians, the plumbers, the, the you know, rough-in guys, all, all the stuff. They're, they're coordinating all those people and making sure that they do. Some of those people might work directly for the general contractor, and then some of them he might sub out as well. Right. So um, versus- That's very sexist, Amber. You said he- he or she. Yeah. Well, most 90, of the most of them are he. Yeah, ninety nine percent of the there's a handful of she's yeah, out there. Yeah. Ninety nine percent are uh, are he's. For but thanks sure. for throwing me under the bus there, babe. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, oh. the climate we live in the world today, it's hard to say what people are going to say. So no, I'm just kidding. No, you're uh, right. Versus self management, basically, you're going to be the GC yourself. So you're coordinating all those trades yourself, which in some cases might work. But I will just like preface this whole episode by saying I think most of the time. It's going to be easier if you just hire a GC, somebody that takes that headache off of your plate. Well, let's talk about that. Let's dive into, to, you know, when should you use a GC and when should you do it yourself? Yep. I think there's some criteria that we wrote down. I wanted to make sure people are on the same page. So I think first off, you have to ask yourself, how big is the project? Right. How many trades am I going to involve? So for instance, if you're going to do a house that requires foundation work and roofing work and it needs a new septic and it needs to have, because sometimes the houses need a lot. And you need a full renovation and you're going to tear walls down because it, you know, it's a four bedroom. You want to make it a three bedroom. You want to add a bathroom. Mm-hmm. Now you have to include a plumber and you have to maybe have to include an electrician. You're going to have to have possibly an architect. There's a lot of trades. A lot of moving parts. A lot of moving parts. And I think that if you if it's a lot of work, then you should consider hiring a general contractor that comes in and can manage all or a big portion of those for you. Right. Because I'll tell you what's going to happen. If you try to self-manage a job that size. With, with no experience with, or well, little even, experience. Well, even if you have experience, it's still a headache because what happens inevitably is, okay, so the painter says they're going to be done on, you know, Friday. So you schedule the, you know, next person, the hardwood floor guy to come in on yeah. Monday. Oh, well, the painter guy didn't get all done on Friday. So now he's going to not going to be ready until Wednesday. So you have to re-coordinate the hardwood floor guy to come, you know, Wednesday or Thursday of that next week. Oh, but wait, he has another job he has to do, so he can't make it that day. So it's just like this, you know, uh, domino effect of problems and scheduling that you're going to end up with. And, oh, the hard, the hardwood floor guy got, you know, shellac on my walls. So now the walls have to be repainted. It's the blame, it's the blame game. It, it's the blame game. And you, it, it is like running an adult daycare. Yeah. 
And yeah, and I would say you've always said that. You're Man- the puppet master. Managing contractors is like running, a, running is. an adult daycare. It is. Yeah. So that, but that headache part of, of having to coordinate all the schedules is well worth the money that you're going to spend hiring that GC to handle all that for you. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to end the job like wanting to pull your hair out and never do it again. <laughs> So I think the next question you want to ask yourself between, you know, is it a GC or do I do it myself? One is how big is the project? And that sort of lends itself to, you could summarize that by saying, is it more cosmetic or is it a full renovation? Yeah. Right. And the cosmetic things, let's talk about, we just talked about how to, if you have all those trades to manage, you should have a GC. We'll talk about how the price uh, looks in just a minute. But I would say that when you're, when you are going to look at a job and say, should I manage the job myself? If you are going into a cosmetic situation where literally you're going to replace a count, like our first flip, let's talk about that. The first flip, we did the work ourselves. Yeah. We replaced the countertop. We painted. Did the hardwood floors. Hardwood floors. Put some carpet upstairs. And that's who we managed. Yeah. Right? We managed a countertop company to come in. No, that's not true. We, we did tried it to do the first one we? ourselves. Ha, yeah. We did that. Uh, you oh, hurt your back. I think, but I think we ended up hiring somebody to come in, did we? Or did we use a stock? Do we use a stock? Yeah. I think that's when we met Mike. Yeah, I think we met the countertop guy that yeah, we used that for, we used for twenty something years. Yeah, so I think that. So anyway, we I think we tried putting the first. No, we did the first countertop ourselves. Did we? Yes, I remember. Cutting, I remember one. cutting the sink out, and I always remember I had to cut the sink opening, which I went. I am not a contractor, and all I remember is my best friend Brian saying to me, "Measure twice and no, cut no, no, once. no." He said one thing. He said, "Glenn," he said, "I'm going to give you one piece of advice. You can always make the hole bigger." <laughs> In other words, if you cut the hole too big, the ceiling's going to fall through and it's, you can never make the hole smaller. So I remember doing the first hole and cutting it several times till I got it enough the right size. So yeah, you can, you can always make the hole bigger. So because we only had to do, we didn't, all we had to manage was a painter who was an hourly guy that we had, Jimmy. Remember old Jimmy? Jimmy, yep. 15 bucks an hour, I think it was back yeah. then to paint. Great guy. I don't know if he's still living or not, but great guy. And then we had the hardwood floor guy yep. that came in, Bill. Remember that yes. guy? Yeah, that's when we met him. I just don't know why I remember that name, but I do. And then I think the only other contract we had, I think Home Depot come in and put the carpet upstairs. Yeah. And our, or in one of the bedrooms or upstairs, whatever upstairs, it was. Yeah. And other than that, that's all we managed because we did a lot of the work ourselves, right. including taking trees down, which I was cutting in the thing. So I, we were sort of doing the work and um, self managing a few other which, trades. Which, by the way, we don't recommend doing the work yourself. You actually will make more money if you don't do the work. Correct. That's, that's a different a whole, episode. That's a whole different episode. Yeah. But I mean, when you're first starting, you're, you're going to do what you're going to do. Yeah. Whether you listen to a podcast like us or listen to professionals and say, no, nah, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to save money. You have to learn sometimes yep. the hard way. That's yep. the way some of us pig-headed people have to learn. I get it because I'm one of those guys. And then how much experience and time do you have? If you've never managed people before, you have no idea how to do this. So I'd be very careful jumping in to do any management if you've never managed anybody before. Now, if you've managed a family, that counts. It does. And but but also what is your personality type? I mean, are you a pushover that's going to get kind of pushed around by anybody right. that you're hiring? Um hopefully not if you're in this industry. Hopefully you learn that lesson really quickly. But the time is an important factor too because if you are doing more than one job at a time. Hopefully not if you're brand new. Hopefully you just do one job at a time. But as you scale and grow and and if you had been, you know, fulfilling that role as the GC and self-managing, where is your time best spent? Because if you have multiple projects, you can't be, you know, managing all those at once. For sure. The pricing models really are, um, contractors will typically give you a price for the job. If you're hiring out subs, would you agree with that? Yeah. Like the plumber will say, I'm going to charge you $4,000 or $5,000 or two, whatever the 10000 whatever the number is. Uh, the HVAC guy is going to have a certain price they come in for. Even a general contractor can come and give you a price for the job. Here's the whole job that I want to come in and get that done. So that's one model is a flat rate, which is what we deal in because... If you're going to be doing, you want to know your costs going in and pre-negotiate those things going in because right. there likely will be extras. Yep. And if you don't, pre- if you don't pre-negotiate that stuff going in, it can get out of hand quickly in the next pricing model, which is called cost plus. Mm-hmm. So cost plus is they they say here is my cost to hire my people, my contractors, and all the material, and I'm going to mark it up fifteen to twenty percent on top of what I spend. The problem with that is you really have no idea what you're walking into. Right. And if you're trying to run a successful investing company, you have to know your numbers up front. So I'd be very cautious on a cost plus model. Remember our house? Yeah. So the first contractor that we met, actually, our architect recommended him. Uh, He comes over and real nice guy. He was very nice guy. 
Um, but he comes over and he's like, yeah, the, there's two people I hate working mm. with. One is real estate agents and the other one's investors. <laughs> Because that's a great way to start a conversation with us. <laughs> yeah, I know we're both, and and but the reason was because we know what we're talking about, right? Whereas For sure. you know a normal he, normal he homeowner, yeah, a normal homeowner goes, oh, okay, that's just how it works, you yeah. know. So, um, but yeah, his price, he's like, I don't really give a, a an even an estimate of what I think it's going to be. He says I just you know charge fifteen percent on top of my material and labor. So do you remember how I determined he was not going to work for us? Yes. I, so normally, if we are doing a half bath addition in upstate New York, it would cost a few thousand dollars right. to do a half bath addition. We're putting some sheetrock up. It's literally if like, you like a four by five room, right? Five by five very, room, very maybe. small room. Yeah. You're going to have minimal plumbing. You know, it's, there is plumbing, but there's minimal plumbing. There's no shower drain though. There's a toilet drain and a sink. Right. Yeah. And so, and those drains tie together under the floor. Right. And if you have full access underneath, so it's full access in our house in yep. in Florida. There's full access. We do have a big, a large, you know, six foot crawl space underneath our house. So we had full access to all that. And I said, well, you got to give me a ballpark. So I don't do that. I said, well, you got to give me some ballpark. So what would it cost to put this bathroom in? Now, in my mind, I know I can get that done for $2,500 to $3,000 in New York, maybe $4,000, but I know I can do that. Yeah, if it's e wrapped even if I'm job. using higher end fixtures and whatnot, you know, maybe five grand. And your material costs don't even, probably aren't even... Five, six hundred bucks. I mean, it's not a lot no, of money. No, it's more than that, but but okay. What would it be? Thousand? Well, so the toilet. A toilet, a vanity. Okay, but they're nicer. Like if we do the toilet that has the bidet built in and all that, you know, that's a thousand bucks by itself. Well, don't we just have a fancy butt? Okay, so. <laughs> No, although, although but apparently that is very our, nice. I do our, like that. So. <laughs> our, we want our guests to have fancy butts. Yeah, that's very true. It was a guest bath. So anyway, so in that particular thing, let's just say it's a thousand bucks and is cost. And I know it might take some time. So I thought, okay, maybe it's a few thousand bucks. And he said to me, yeah, that'd be about 25. And I said, oh, 2,500. He goes, oh no, 25,000. I go, yeah. 25,000 for that half bath? I said, I'm done. I remember walking away and saying, yeah, you were out at that moment. I actually walked. I, said, I had to like politely say, I, goodbye. Said, I got stuff to do. I looked, I looked at you and said, yeah, this guy's not going to work. No. So again, he's used to working for people that live on the beach. They mm -hmm. have unlimited budgets and just want to go to town. And we are smart enough to say, even in our personal home, we have a budget, we have a number, we want to get to that number. So you have to interview multiple contractors just to get to that spot to figure out. And now we have settled on a guy that we're paying by the hour, ironically, but there's no overhead. We're just paying him about 65 right. bucks an hour, whatever it is. And he's doing great work. And I don't know if I'm going to use him for the larger parts of our renovations, sure. but for some smaller odds and stuff, he's doing a great job. Yes. He yeah. He's doing a really, a really <laughs> great job with it. So it's good stuff. So, all right, now it's time for our episode of stupid human comments. Although we're going to do something a little bit different this time. That's really applicable to this episode about contractors and doing work in the house. This is going to be more of just a plain old stupid human. <laughs> so let's watch, let's watch this, this clip. If you haven't seen it and check it out. It's pretty funny. Who'd you say did the electrical work? Oh, that would be my nephew, Thomas. He's very handy. Yeah. Uh, what year did his house burn down? Oh, about two years ago. How do you know his house burned down? <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, this, this week's award for stupid human goes to Thomas, who uh, <laughs> apparently did the wiring in that electrical box. So, oh, my Lord. Oh, crazy. my goodness. We, right. we, we've seen houses like that, though. It's crazy. We have. We have. It's amazing what people do. It's amazing what you find when you do flips. It, is it fun. never ceases to amaze it me. It is fun. You get to see yeah. a lot of cool stuff yep. and a lot of strange stuff and a lot of stuff you're thinking, how did this house not burn yes. to the ground before this? It's crazy. Yeah. How do you find contractors? That's yeah. the next big thing. People say, okay, so there's a difference between general contractors, self-managing. I get all that. I get the pricing models. How do I find general or how do I find these contractors in the first place? And we've got some tips to yep. share with you. Yeah. So a really great way, probably the best way is referrals, because that way you know the person that's being referred has done a good job for somebody else. They're happy with their work. They're happy with the price. And we should also uh, talk about when you're looking for contractors, there's three things you want to look for. And and oddly enough, our current project manager, who's been with us for many years, was a contractor at the time yep. when when we were thinking about hiring him as a, to do work yes. on one of our houses to be our GC. Yes. And he said, there's three things you want to look for in a contractor. Good budget, good quality, and good timeline. Those are the three most important things in a contractor. Quality, time, Qu Quality, budget. time, and budget. Pick two. Because you'll never get all three in one guy or one girl. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. So, you know, if you have good quality and good budget, then the person's going to be really slow and take their time and, to get the work done. And, you know, that that scenario of whatever combination you want to use, pick two of those things. Yeah. What, are, what are the two most important to you? 
So when you're looking for those people, yeah, that, that was a great, that was a great add on to make sure people knew about that. And I think it's important they look for wholesale contractors, like yes. contractors that can work for investors and flippers right. and renters. And because th- you want a contractor that understands I can get regular business from this person. I don't have to spend money on marketing. I don't have to go do a ton of estimates because this person will feed me on a regular basis with deal after deal after deal. So I don't have to spend money on all the other business things that I normally would and drive around giving a bunch of estimates that I don't get to work for. Right. So if I do that, maybe I I should charge less. Again, there are contractors that only do high-end kitchens. That's great. That's not what you want when you're doing a flip. Not that you don't want good quality work, but you don't need someone that's going to charge extra because they're really great at ornate crown molding because that's not stuff you're probably going to use on on a normal flip that you're doing. Again, I want to be very clear about this. It doesn't mean you do crappy work. It means that you want to find a contractor that doesn't, that, uh, that understands because, the because job, they, yeah, you know, that understands, understands the, the mission, that understands you want to get in and out of the house, still have a quality job that's, you know, you're going to be able to sell the house and, and feel proud about your product. Yeah. Um, but but still understands, hey, this is a win-win for me too. Because that's a conversation I have with all of my contractors. We're going to dive into scope of work here in a minute. But that's one of the things I tell them is, look, I love paying my contractors because when that means the work is getting done. You are never going to have to chase me for money. You don't even have to, like you said, go out on other estimates. I will bring you job to job to job to job, and you won't ever have any downtime. So that's the win-win for them. You know, they're yeah. they're not having to go out on all these estimates. They're not having to hound people for money. They're not having to put liens on people's houses because they didn't make the payments. Like I love paying my contractors. So that those are the people you're looking for. Um, another really good thing that I've been using a lot lately is um, like the Nextdoor app. Because those are people that are right in your community and they're, there's always people on there asking, hey, I need a good handyman. Hey, I need a good contractor. Who's a, who's a good electrician in this area? And there's like a thread going of, you know, 50 comments of people saying, this person did a great job for me. They're oh, really, really fair price. So like I'll save all those and and so for future use. But that's a really good way to get those kind of um once removed referrals, you know, there, there's still people in your community that you may or may not personally know, Yeah, but that contractor has done a really good job for them. And they're, well, they're it's nice they show up to say, Hey, listen, I got you from Mary on next right. app. She's one of my neighbors in my neighborhood. And you could also call, you could reach out to Mary and say, you open yeah. for a phone call, send her a message and well, have and, a conversation. And you know, when we first started, there weren't even like Google reviews or no, like nothing. Angie's list reviews. I think it's just called Angie's now, but, but you know, there people are rated now. So, yeah. you know, whether they do a good job or not. So, you know, maybe not some of the real small guys who maybe don't even have a web presence, but but those are the guys that you're going to find on Nextdoor and get referrals that way. And and you don't even have to go through other people's posts. You can actually put your own posts on there. Hey, I'm doing a flip. Who has a good contract? Who has a good one? Th- those are, that's a really good uh, way to find it recently. Another great way to just drive around looking for dumpsters, like take a different way home. Like when you're driving, if you're normally looking for vacant houses anyway, Start looking for dumpsters. We, I always train on you get what you focus on. So if you yeah. drive, go a different way home. If you don't see dumpsters, go through some neighborhoods and drive around. Take an extra five minutes if you're looking for contractors and look for, you know, if there's a dumpster, there's a good chance there's work happening and mm-hmm. see what the see what the job looks like. It's a great way to see them in action, which we're going to talk about next. But that's a great way to look and see if they get numbers, get out, get a card. Hey, what do you guys do? Have a conversation. Great. And just meet, meet people that way because they're on the job. You can yeah. find them there. Another really good way is right at the the Home Depot or Lowe's, the pro desk, you know, and go there. Our suggestion is to go there early in the morning, show up at like six or seven o'clock in the morning. Right. Well, that's when the good contractors are there. That's when the good ones are there because they're getting their day set up. They're they're starting out in the morning, getting all their supplies that they need for the job. If you go there at, you know, 11 o'clock and there's the guy shooting, you know, just conversation with the guys at the pro shooting desk the and the bowl. other contractors and they're having their cup of coffee and you know, they're just kind of taking their time and moving around. Those are not the guys you want. You right. want the guys that are organized, that are there in the morning, ready to get their supplies and then get to the job site and spend the day on the job site, not going back and forth to Home Depot 10 times. And they're and, not usually staying there with their crew. The ones no. who stand there with their crew do not know how to manage right. their own business. Because their crew should be on site. the job site. Absolutely. Their crew should be on the job site. And the other thing you want to look for on those, because a lot of them are going to be parked right at the pro desk. And so you want to look at how they keep their vehicle. Now, a contractor's vehicle is never going to be like perfectly spotless. But, you know, is it well organized? Is it filthy? Like, are there like papers strewn all over the front seat? 
So that that gives you an indication of how they keep their job site too. Are they are they total yeah. slobs? Or are they somewhat organized? Yeah, and you can ask the pro desk too. I know people that work with us. We inter- you you get to be part of our pro desk discount. Yep. But but even if you're not, when you go out and uh, you go to the pro desk and say, "Listen, I'm looking for referrals." They're not supposed to give you referrals, but you find that if you're if you're good with those guys, they're usually pretty good about yeah. letting you know. Let's say, if hey, you should talk to so and so. Yeah. yeah. So I want to tell you, I want to tell a Home Depot story and I want you to tell a Home Depot story. I know you know which one I'm talking about, right? Yes. When the contractor yep. kind of wanted to aggressively attack you, yes. not knowing who you were. So let's talk about that in a minute. But first, I want to talk about mine. It, you mentioned this earlier. Uh, Neil, who's our project manager for, I think he's worked for us for over 10 years now. Long time. Yeah, long time. He was actually a contractor, still is a contractor, but we had had him do two different quotes to do jobs for us. And we ended up not hiring him because he was a little more expensive than other people. Do you remember this? Oh yeah. Okay. And then, so then we called him for a third job like a year later and he said, nah, I don't want to give an estimate because every time we, every time I I come out there, you don't hire me. So I'm not going to waste my time. And I'm like, excuse me, but he was right. Yeah. But then not long after I was up at six in the morning, I had to go get a plumbing part. I always remember this. I had to get some weird little plumbing part and I go in and I'm not a, I'm not a morning person. I'm not, I, I didn't remember this. I don't remember you ever being up at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was there at six. I was there bright and early. I, I don't know why I was up, but I had to get something done. I had to get something before a job. I forgot exactly what it was, but I had to be there. And so I was in Home Depot. It was very quiet that time of the morning. Six o'clock was pretty early. And Lo and behold, at the pro desk, I'm asking them for this little tiny part. Do you have something like this? And they're looking at it. And Neil walks up. Didn't, I looked at him like, awkward. And then he walked up. And he's like, hey, Glenn, how you doing? I said, oh, hey, Neil, how are you? And, and they said, hey, I know where that is. Let me help you. And we had a moment to walk together back and talked. And we just kind of, you know, just shut the, shut the bull crap and just blah, 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 talk, talk, talk. And we came back up and then time passed. And it wasn't long after I was able to shake his hand and say, thank you so much. He found that part for me. I shook his hand and we didn't talk for about six months until we decided to hire a project manager and we reached out to him and he came and interviewed with the the woman that was running our company at the time and we hired him. And here he is 10 years later. So there's my Home Depot story. Had I not bumped into him, I don't know that I would have, I would have thought that he would have cared to even work for us. Yeah. We just, we had a nice conversation and I think he understood it was business and and it is what it is. So tell your home, yours is much better. So tell your story because this is a great story to hear about Home Depot and just the way some contractors act. You know, listen, the truth is a lot of contractors are jerks. There's a lot. There's a lot of really good ones too, but you have to sift through the crap to find the good ones. Yeah. And so a lot of them are just rough and crass and- um, Entitled. <laughs> entitled. They just think because they know because they know how to build things that they can just be the be the shit. It's like, yeah. what? why? Why do you have to act like that? Yeah. But they do. And they also act like no one else's time is important but theirs. A lot of them do that. Now, some of you might be going right now, well, don't say that's not me. Well, if it's not you, then good. Then it's yeah, not you. You know who you are. You know who you are. Yeah. But if you're the jerk side, you know who you are too. So Well, maybe, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. If you don't have tons of friends, you'll know. So go ahead. All right. So go ahead. Yeah. So so one day I've got a Home Depot. Now, there's pro desk parking, which is where all the, the pros park because it's just convenient. So there's probably, I don't know, 10 parking spots there at any given, at any given store. So. I go, I go in and I'm, I'm go up to the pro desk and then I'm going shopping, getting what I want. And I come back to the pro desk and the, the guy that runs the pro desk is like, Amber, there's this guy in here that was all pissed off that there's a convertible, which was my car, this little convertible. Little, little Lexus convertible. Little Lexus I, bought you, I bought you for our anniversary. You did. Yeah. Um, convertible parked in the, your, the pro desk parking. You're taking up his spot because you can't be a pro because you're driving a little convertible. And he I told him, big truck in there, all the big yeah, trucks pull in there, trucks and vans and all that stuff. Yeah. And he said, he said, I took up for you though. I told him that you don't know who she is and she spends more in here in this store than all of the other people parked at the pro desk combined. And you just need to leave her alone. And he was still like really mad. So I think he's like going around the store looking for you. Now, one of my other contractors that we work with often was at the pro desk too, and heard all this going on. So he had my back too. So he's, He's going around the who, store. Who, it was who, Jerry. Okay. Who was a felon had done time. Oh yeah. He was a felon. Yep. <laughs> so he knew how to, he knew how to handle himself. So yep. anyways, yeah, yep. that's, a, that's another story for a different time, but, but he, he worked for us for quite a while. He had my back. He did. So he actually went around the store with me and, you know, made sure that I was okay and made sure that, you know, this guy wasn't going to attack me. Apparently the guy had like a screen door and he didn't want to carry it from the store to the parking lot. Yeah. He was all pissed off that I was parked there. And yeah. so, so anyway, so. Long story short, 
they said that he was going to be waiting at my car, waiting for me to come out yeah. and he was going to tell me off, yeah. you know? So, so the contractor actually walked me to the car and made sure that I was safe and made sure that I was okay. But you know, that was, that was a, a nice feeling to have these. And that, that also is um, to go to another point talks about relationships because I had a really good relationship with the guys at the pro desk and the girls that worked there. They had my back. They did. Plus a contractor that we had a good relationship. He had my back. Yeah. So I had all these people looking out for me to make sure that I was going to be okay. Cause I'm this, sure that guy was probably thinking she spends more than all of us put together. Yeah. Hmm. Who is that? And so he probably he probably had a had a he, he was probably sitting in the parking lot waiting. Thought, Does she have a husband? <laughs> <laughs> you're not going near my wife, buddy. I'll tell you that much. So 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 the Home Depot Pro Desk is a great place to meet contractors. Not that one, but there's a great place to meet contractors. And last but not least, I'll say is RIAs, uh, Real Estate Investment Associations. Yeah. Look up your local RIA, your meetup groups, whatever those are. Usually there's contractors that are in there and they understand the pricing that you're looking for. So it's right. a great place to do it. So. Next is you want to vet them. Yep. So once you go through all that, now you want to vet the contractor and say, well, how do I know if they're worth it? How do I know if they're worth my time? And how do I know if they're the right person for me? So I'll, uh, I'll start off by saying that you want to interview them, not let them interview you. You want to stay in control of the conversation without being a jerk about it. But just be, you know, ask questions so that you're, because you want to get the right answers. Like, what do you, and, and use an interview sheet. That's right. what we used to always do is use a, use a sheet. And say, listen, let me let me give you a call and we'll talk about it. Instead of saying, hey, I have a job, say, before, before we get started, let me ask some questions. You know, what exactly do you do? What are your skills? What do you specialize in? How that, much that's an important one because especially like in, in the climate that we were in in New York, we always had people, always had uh, guys that did siding and, and windows roofing and, roofing and roofing that wanted to do inside work in the winter. Now, yeah. the guys that do siding and windows and roofing are not necessarily good inside contractors. They're not, not good at the finish Some work. are, but, but occasionally, rarely, rarely. Occasionally, there's some are. Um, but yes, rarely. But they always wanted to do the inside work in the, in the winter because, number one, there wasn't a lot of outside work to do, so they wanted to stay busy. But you want to be really cautious of that. So what do they specialize in? Because that probably isn't the right, you know, if they specialize in something else, that's probably yeah. not the person you want to hire. Well, it's important to say, well, I specialize in tile. Well, great. So do you do plumbing? Well, I can. Okay. Yeah. That's not the right answer. So if you use a checklist and use a, you know, write down the questions that you want to ask your contractor. Again, how much experience do you have? Uh, how long have you been doing it for? Do you have any licenses? Now that depends if you need that in your area. Right. Ironically, in upstate New York, which is the most litigious state in the country, probably, um, they're not they're not required to have some a license. Some of the cities. Some of the so, cities are and some of them aren't. Yeah. But upstate New York, where where we flip, there's not required to. So the, oh oh you mean the G, the GC the right. contractor to have a license yeah. oh, okay I thought but you meant like certain here in trades. Florida yeah you have to have one if you're gonna yes. if you want to remove a nail I right. mean it's really they're really right. strict on licenses down here but other right. parts of the country so know your know your area and what the licenses the are required are, yeah. now obviously if you're if you're a plumber you have to be a licensed plumber if you're an electrician licensed electrician right you have to have, so ask those questions about what you specialize in and it's good to know that they say well I'm an electrician great say great. If I ever need specialized electrical work or on a job, are you open to some smaller projects that I'm doing? Sure. And keep those those names. But mm -hmm. but you interview them. And then one of the most important questions is what kind of insurance do you have? Yep. What kind of insurance do you have? Do you have workman's comp? Do you have liability? Liability. And do you mind putting us on as an additional insured on your policy for the job that we do? They yep. should have no problem with that. They call their agent. The agent will list you as an additional insured on their policy so that if they default and don't make their payment, you get notified or yep. if something happens to that policy, you get notified, but you also can get paid out if something happens on that. Just they know that you're part of that. And, and there's certain that, so. paperwork that you want to have in place too. you know, tax stuff, the 1099 and all that, that you want to have in place. Correct. You want to do that when you're hiring the contractor versus at the end, right. because you may not, you know, may or may not ever see them again. And right. You don't well, we'll, to... we'll cover that. I think in yeah. hiring, we should, okay. we should, but let's, let's make sure we cover that. We didn't have yep. that. So let's, let's make sure we talk about the, yep. the 1099 and the, and the lien release boat, but. And, and I, I just want to back up a little bit as far as like you interview them and not the other way around. Cause you, you talked about, is it more intimidating for women in the beginning of this episode than mm -hmm. it is for men? And I mean, I think it could be intimidating for either, but I, I do think women might be a little more intimidated than men because it's a male dominated industry. Sure. And, you know, a lot of the contractors are kind of rough and tough and, yep. you know, <laughs> ex-cons and, and, and whatnot. So it can be, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they are, some of them are. It is true. Um, so it can be a little bit intimidating. And I, I think in the beginning for me, you know, I'm just drawing on my own experience here, but in the beginning for me, I'm not going to put all of that onus on the contractor, though, because some of it was just my own insecurities and um, 
just lack of experience that that made me feel that way. So I think the more prepared you can be, like you said, having that interview sheet, not just randomly ask them questions, but you know, there's some online. We give the awesome to all of our students, of course. Um, but but just have what you need to just remember that you're the one in charge. I mean, I've I've worked with a lot of our female students through the years that, you know, the the contractors do tend to try to be the boss and tell them what to do because women may tend to have that personality of, oh, I'm just going to let the man take the lead. Yeah. But you have to remember when you're you're an investor, you are the one in charge of your bottom line. You know, you're you're the one that needs to make the profit here. So you need to stay in charge and not get pushed around, not not do excess stuff that you don't need to do just because they want to make extra money. You need to stay in charge and you need to manage that job like a boss. Yeah. And I think it's important. It, that all starts when you first meet someone. Yeah. Right. You can't suddenly you, have to be you, can't, you can't be all meek and sheepish and right. then Well, I don't know. What would you do? What do you recommend? And then like, try and be then try and be the person in charge. Right. You have to really be the person in charge. With it. You don't have to be a jerk about it. Right. But you have to let them know that you have confidence about you and that you know what you're talking about when you're going in, even if you don't. But yeah. you gotta fake it till you make it. And but even that's if, okay. Even if you have to ask a question, yes. you, you could pose it at, you know, because you don't have to know everything there is about construction to do this successfully. Of course not. A, a, at all. And it's okay to ask the contractor questions like, okay, so I want to take this wall down. You know, is it load bearing? Hey, what are my options? Can you let me know what my options are? And then I'll make a decision from there. Yeah. Not what would you do? Right. You know. All right. Now it's time for our Gen X moment. So I wanted to ask you, I was thinking about contractors and working on houses and all that stuff. And one of the songs that comes to mind is a song by the Talking Heads. And I can hear it in my head. It was played in the movie Revenge of the Nerds, which you remember that movie. Well, they were ahead of their time back then, right? So, yeah. Um, and it was played when the house had caught on fire. Burning down the house. Yes, burning <laughs> down the house from the talking heads. So that's the song that I was thinking about, burning down the house. I was just thinking about that when we're doing contractors. Not that you want to have a contractor burn your house no. down. But usually they're, you have to have contractors come in and fix it. So I just was thinking about that for our Gen X moment uh, for this episode. So <laughs> Old school. Yes, old school, but uh, but good stuff. So, all right. You know, we have so much that we're covering, and I think that we're giving people a lot of information, a lot of stuff to think about, and I don't want to give them so much that they miss the most important stuff that we have coming up. So I think we're going to go ahead and do a break here, and we'll keep this, everything we've done to this part will be in episode one, and the very next episode, episode two, will be all the future stuff we're going to be talking about in regards to contractors, right? Let's do that so people can really digest this and, and hopefully learn a lot from this. That concludes this episode of the Fearless Future podcast. Make sure you click that like button. And now you're really going to want to subscribe because you don't want to miss part two of the contractor series and turn on those notifications so you don't miss anything in the future.